Hi guys and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at EvDev pass-through or event device pass-through. This is a technique which is seldom actually discussed online but can actually be quite useful when used with some of our VMs. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. So what is EvDev and what's EvDev pass-through? Well, EvDev is an input interface which is built straight into the Linux kernel. Now this receives inputs from things such as keyboard strokes or the mouse moving around the screen. So the EvDev pass-through is passing through these inputs across into QMU, so in turn to your virtual machine. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey Space Invader, we can easily do that just passing through a USB keyboard and mouse using the VM template. So you're thinking, just what's the point of EvDev pass-through? But in some situations, EvDev can have a few advantages passing through the input this way. And one of those is, for example, if you want to pass through a PS2 keyboard, you can use EvDev pass-through to do that. Maybe you're setting up an old retro VM, something like Windows 95, and that doesn't actually have USB drivers. So you can pass through your USB keyboard and mouse as an FDEV device and use it natively in that. And you can see me doing that here in my video how to set up Windows 95 as a VM on Unraid. And another thing about FDEV pass-through is if you hit both control buttons on the keyboard, it will switch over the input from the VM back to the host. So it's kind of like a KVM switch. Now, of course, switching back the input to the host system is much more useful on a system that has a full desktop environment such as running a KVM QMU VM on something like Ubuntu. So most of us, we normally access our Unraid web interface from another computer, and that's how we control our system. But some users, they have a dedicated monitor for Unraid, from which they either access the terminal, or they're running Unraid in GUI mode, and they use that monitor to control everything on the server. So for these people, being able to switch the input from the VM back to the host on the fly is really useful. Oh, and also, passing through input this way it has really low latency, so you don't need to worry about not being able to game if you're passing through your keyboard and mouse using EvDev. Even if you don't really have any reason to use EvDev pass-through, it's still nice to know, just to add it to your VM toolbox as something you can use in the future, should ever the need arise. Okay then, so let's jump in and get this set up. If I look at my system devices and scroll down to the bottom here, you can see I've got a Logitech wireless keyboard and mouse here. And normally, to pass through a keyboard and mouse, we just go to the VMs tab and we edit the template and add the keyboard and mouse by selecting it as a USB device in the template here. Now, sadly, using EvDev pass-through isn't as simple as just checking a tick box, but it's not super difficult either. In the description of this video, I've placed a file which has written notes with the various commands that we're gonna use to get this done. So firstly, let's open up a terminal window and I'm going to list the input devices by their ID by running this command, ls forward slash dev forward slash input forward slash by hyphen ID. Now I've got a wireless Logitech USB keyboard and mouse dongle plugged in at the moment, but you can see here it's listing four things. So how do you know what's what? Well, that's really quite easy. All we need to do is to look at the output of the event while we press either the keyboard buttons or move the mouse around. So to do this, we're going to use the cat command. So let's look at the directory where these are, forward slash dev, forward slash input, forward slash by hyphen ID. So I'm going to type cat, space, then that directory, and then the item that I think is the keyboard. Well, I actually know that it is, but I'm just going to demonstrate anyway. So I'm going to check USB Logitech USB receiver hyphen event hyphen kbd. So now I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to type some things on the keyboard. Now don't expect the letters that you're typing on the keyboard to appear on the screen. It's just going to be random characters like you can see there. So this here confirms that this input is in fact the keyboard. So let's do the same and try again for the mouse. So this time I'm going to cap the ifo01 hyphen event hyphen mouse. Again I'm going to hit enter and then move the mouse around. We can see some random characters again. So this one's the mouse. Okay, so let's clear the screen. 
Now if you remember, earlier I said that we could pass through a PS2 keyboard and mouse as well. Well you won't actually find those in the location that we are just looking at the USB ones. To do that, we need to look somewhere else. So if you have a PS2 keyboard in, then check the location of forward slash dev, forward slash input, forward slash by hyphen path. So it's by hyphen path instead of by hyphen ID. Now unfortunately I couldn't find a PS2 keyboard anywhere. I thought I had one, I've just spent about two hours looking and can't find it. So unfortunately I can't actually demonstrate it, but it would be here and it would probably start with the word platform. And then you just test the output of your keyboard by concatenating the file using the cat command just as we did earlier, typing things on the keyboard and seeing what's what. Now just on a side note, these locations that we've been looking at are actually just sim links. If I clear the screen here, so if I take a look at my keyboard and mouse again by looking at the by hyphen ID directory, but at the end of the command I add hyphen L, the yellow writing at the end tells me which event they're linked to, like event 4, 1, 2 and mouse 0. Now it isn't important to know which event everything's linked to, that's not important at all. I'm just showing you this because in the input directory everything in the by hyphen ID and by hyphen path directories are linked to these events. Now you might read online some people saying that you should link directly to these events. You shouldn't do that because when you reboot your server these event numbers can change, but obviously the sim links like mine in the by hyphen ID directory, my Logitech USB receiver, those sim links don't change. So even if the event number changes, the sim link is always going to be the same and it's always going to be your device. Right, so let's clear the screen. Okay, so now how do we go about passing through these events across to a virtual machine? Okay, so we've found the devices that we want to pass through, but before we can do this, we need to allow it in the QMU config file. So in the terminal window type nano space forward slash etc forward slash libvert forward slash qmu.conf and what we're looking for is on line 451. So here if we type control and then underscore we can go to that line. So pop 451 in here and press enter to go to that line and this is the section that we're looking for here. Now at the moment all of this is commented out with the hashtag at the beginning. So remove the hashtag from every line here and then under the last line before the closing bracket, we need to add our keyboard and mouse there. So we put in the input location there inside speech marks. And then the same again for the mouse on the line underneath. So with that done, we can press Ctrl and O to write out and save the file. So with that done, for it to take effect, we have to restart the QMU service. So the easiest way to do that is probably just reboot the server. Okay, so now let's add it to the VM. Let's use this Pop OS one here. So let's go to Edit. Obviously, if it's a USB keyboard, check it's not added as a USB device. You go to Form View here, and then scroll down to the bottom. And then at the very bottom, let's delete this line here where it says Domain. And you'll find the text in the description, and then just paste it in here. Obviously, you replace the parts where it says your keyboard ID and your mouse ID with yours. Obviously, this is mine here. So that's all we need to do for this to actually work but there is an optional step that we can do. Um, people report that you get better performance if you use the Vert.io drivers. Look for the section where it says input type, and then above that, paste in this text. And what this does is add the keyboard and mouse as a Vert.io device. So for this to work, we do need to have Vert.io drivers. All modern Linux OSs have these Vert.io drivers built in, but for things like Windows, you'd have to install them separately, just like you do in Windows for things like the Vert.io network drivers. But if you're using an older operating system, such as Windows 95, obviously you're not going to put that in there, because there's no Vert.io drivers for Windows 95. Okay, so let's look at this in action. I'm going to boot up the Unraid server. On the left-hand side is the Unraid host, and the right-hand side is the Pop OS VM. Now obviously I could have booted up the server in either terminal mode or unraid GUI mode. I decided to boot up in terminal mode this time. Okay, so on the Pop OS VM I'm just going to log in. And as expected the keyboard and mouse is working fine. I can open up a web browser and do a search. No problems there. Now if I hit the left and right control buttons, it will switch back across onto the unraid side. And I can log in here. And so now the keyboard and mouse have left the VM and they're across onto the host. So I can type in commands directly into Unraid and run things like my Matrix Terminal screensaver. 
Now, if you fancy running this nerdy terminal screensaver on your server, well, in a couple of days, I'll upload a two minute tips video showing you how to do that. OK, so hitting both control buttons again and the controller switch back over onto the VM and I'm controlling that with the keyboard and mouse. For me, I don't really use this feature much, but I'm sure for some people it would be quite useful. Now, what I use EvDev pass through for is passing through a keyboard and mouse to a VM that doesn't have USB support. So this Windows 95 VM, for instance. So the keyboard and mouse are working perfectly in Windows 95, that's awesome. Now sadly, Windows 95 won't run using VNC graphics. It will only work with a graphics card passed through to it. So thanks to FDev pass through, we're actually able to use a Windows 95 VM. Now if you want to see how to install Windows 95 as a VM, then again shortly, there'll be a video uploaded showing how to do that. And also don't forget with EvDev pass through if you've got a PS2 keyboard or mouse or you can pass them through to any VM. Anyway, so that brings us to the end of this video. Now, as always, I want to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons and supporters. Thank you so much, guys, for making these videos possible. And if you'd like to join these great bunch of people and support the channel, then please find the links in the description below. Anyway, it's time for me to go now. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in that next video.